Ooh, is that it? Oh, I bet that's it. Wow, that's so cool. I'm in Jupiter, Florida to play a show at Florida Atlantic University. Before I left, I picked out a few target species of birds that I wanted to see and found that most of them could be seen at a place called Winding Waters Natural Area. The 548 acres of land is composed mostly of sensitive pine and wetland habitat, which is perfect for wading birds, ducks, blackbirds, and a few select aerial predators. On my list of birds to find are snail kite, black-bellied whistling duck, limpkin, and purple gallinule. Before visiting the wetland, I'm making a stop at another destination that caught my eye, the Loggerhead Marine Life Center. The center contains a veterinary hospital, exhibit hall, outdoor classroom, research lab, gift shop, and more. The main attraction is their many sea turtles undergoing rehabilitation. Hey everyone, I'm at the Loggerhead Marine Life Center where they do sea turtle rehabilitation. So all these tanks behind me have sea turtles that are in for one reason or another. Uh, whether they were found injured or they were just not acting right. And so it's really cool to walk around and see all the different turtles and what they're doing to treat them. In order to learn more, I caught up with Susan Schneider, a volunteer at the center. The nine and a half miles of beach out here is the world's second largest loggerhead nesting site. Right now it's nesting season, so we're looking forward to having a good, uh, good amount of nests here. Last year we had 12,000 loggerhead nests. We uh, release the turtles right out here if they're a loggerhead, if, if they're a, a green sea turtle or Kemp's Ridley or a hawksbill or any of the other sea turtles. They're released in other places. Uh, we're, we're free to the public. We're a big part of the community, and we appreciate all of our guests. And hope everyone can come come see us sometime. After learning about the sea turtles at the Marine Life Center, I took a quick trip to the beach before heading to Winding Waters Natural Area. Hey everyone, I'm so excited. I'm at Winding Waters Natural Area, and I just came from the beach, so I still have my shark swimsuit on. But I'm so excited. There's been reports of a snail kite here and a bunch of other stuff, and so snail kite is the big one I'm gonna see, or gonna see if I can find. But I'm just excited to walk around. I stepped out under the bright Florida sunshine and started around the 4.3 mile loop around the lake. I noted several unique species, including common gallinule, boat-tailed grackle, and tricolored heron, as well as some great habitat for predators. If I was a snail kite, this is the tree that I would probably sit on. <laughs> this looks so good. This seems like a really active place for wildlife. There's a bunch of little fish and a bunch of bigger fish snapping at the top of the water. And also, there's just a bunch of birds flying around. I haven't seen anything too notable yet. There's a big lizard, that's pretty cool. Every time I walk, you can hear lizards scuttling off in the distance. What a cool ecosystem here. I continued my loop around the lake, scanning the water, forest, and sky. Suddenly, a quick bird darted out over the open water, and I was able to focus on it long enough to make an ID. Ooh, is that it? Oh, I bet that's it. Wow, that's so cool. Formerly called the Everglades kite, the snail kite is a medium-sized hawk with a deeply hooked bill and sharp talons. Males are gray with reddish-orange legs and a reddish bill with a black tip, and females are brown with a white-striped chest and white stripe over their eye. The snail kite is common in Latin America, but is listed as federally endangered and endangered in Florida because they only live in select areas and their population is relatively small. Southern Florida marshes are the only reliable place to find snail kites in the United States. Nests are built over water, often in a shrub or small tree, and contain one to four eggs. Snail kites can be seen gliding slowly over swampy regions in search of their main prey item, the apple snail. Their diet consists almost exclusively of these snails, and they use their specialized bill to pull them from their shell.
The snail kite's biggest threat is the degradation and drainage of marshes, which negatively impacts the snail kite itself and the apple snails which they feed on. Basically the snail kite's acting like a northern harrier, but instead of being over a meadow, it's over a swamp, which is pretty awesome. And then all of a sudden it joined this kettle. There's a kettle of a ton of stuff uh, over to this side, and it flew up and just kind of joined them, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on over there. I continued walking and spotted a few perched black vultures, as well as one of my target birds waiting in the water behind some reeds. The Limpkin. The limpkin is a tall, long-legged bird with a brown body, yellowish long bill, and white wing and body spots. The northern part of their breeding range includes Florida, but their range extends into Central and South America. They can be found in marshes, swamps, and on the shores of other freshwater bodies of water, and much like the snail kite, they feed almost exclusively on apple snails, using their long bill to extract them. In fact, their bill has a gap just before the tip that allows it to act as a tweezers when removing snails from their shell. Their bill is also curved slightly to the right to allow it to fit into the right-handed shell of the apple snail. Their platform-type nest can be built on floating vegetation or high up in trees, and around three to eight eggs are laid per clutch. Although similar in appearance to herons and ibises, the limpkin is actually part of its own taxonomic family, with it being more closely related to rails and cranes. Well, I've seen some really good stuff so far. The snail kites have been so cool. Also, two limpkin thus far. And I'm pretty sure I saw a common ground dove, but it was, it just flew away really quick. It flew to some bushes and then, like, it just took off and I couldn't relocate it, so that's been too bad, but what a beautiful day, beautiful weather, and uh, it gets even prettier as the sun goes down. With the sun setting, I continued scanning for black-bellied whistling ducks and purple gallinules, finding other species along the way, such as a little blue heron, a wood stork, a palm warbler, and a few more snail kites. Feeling like I was running out of time to see the rest of the species I was after, I stopped to look at the map to see how much more of the trail I had to walk to complete the loop. So this is where I started up here, and then I went on this trail, cut over, and went all the way around through here and now I'm here and I still have to go here to get back. Activity has definitely died down it seems. The grackles are still doing their thing everywhere but I haven't seen too much as far as new species go. While scanning through the water birds and picking through the many common gallinules at the natural area, I was able to glimpse a slightly darker, iridescent bird in the marsh. It was the purple gallinule I was looking for. The purple gallinule is a chicken-sized bird with long legs, a conical bill, and a short tail. Adults are a combination of iridescent colors, including gray, green, turquoise, purple, light blue, red, white, and yellow. Purple gallinules can be found in the southeastern United States into Central America, and are often seen foraging near the edges of freshwater marshes. They are extraordinary flyers, and have been known to show up far out of their range in search of food. Purple gallinules feed on a variety of different items and are omnivorous. Nests are made by both parents, and six to eight eggs are laid per brood. Chicks are sub-precocial, meaning they are able to walk shortly after hatching, but still need to be fed by their parents for their first few weeks. As their name implies, they are related to the common gallinule, but can easily be distinguished by their bright coloration. Well, I'm back to where we started, and I was actually able to see the purple gallinule. It was right by the beginning, just the other direction. And I was checking out so many common gallinules, and I just saw another gallinule-shaped bird and was like, I might as well check it, and it just turned out to be it. And a beautiful sunset as well. On my way to the parking lot, a great horned owl began calling from the top of a large tree. Along with the purple gallinule, it was a perfect way to end the day. As I left, I reflected on my experiences at the Loggerhead Marine Life Center and Winding Waters Natural Area. The Marine Life Center is a great place to learn about sea turtle conservation, and the natural area is home to many species that are only found regularly in South Florida, such as the snail kite and limpkin. I hope to be back to visit both destinations again someday, but until then, we'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. That scared the heck out of me. <laughs>